Point of View is brought to you in association with Stambic Bank, moving forward. And Glowfert Company Limited, growing growth. Hello, this is The Point of View. We're on City TV every Monday and Wednesday. The Point of View is your favorite current affairs show, and we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions, and always come up with some useful insights. We have a very important program for you tonight. It appears there is a fight for the soul of legal education in the country. It dates back to maybe half a decade ago. Lots of controversial issues have happened with our law school, and tonight we're trying to understand the genesis of these crises, the various perspectives to the matters, and, of course, your views on this very important topic. It's live and interactive, so if you are on social media, our hashtag is Point of View. And, of course, we are on Facebook at CTTVGH. My name is Bernard Abel. When we come back, I'll tell you more about our show today. So failing exams is not such a strange thing, but when over 80% of people who write an exam fail, you have a big problem. And this is the second consecutive year has happened. And the strange thing is that when they fail and they go for remark, almost all the people who go for remarking pass. So what's really going on with the entry into the law school, the exams they write to qualify as lawyers? Do we even need exams to enter law school? Do we even need the Ghana School of Law at all? Why don't people who do LLB simply take a one-year course and go straight to become professional lawyers. All these questions will be answered on the show today. I have a very interesting panel, and I'll be bringing you that panel very shortly. But even before we bring up the panel, this issue of legal education has been quite big. And so today, although there's a pending judgment on an injunction that some law students placed on a reset of an exam, half of the students who were supposed to write turned up to write. The other half turned out to watch. Marie-France Fojo was at the end block of the University of Ghana to find out whether the pending injunction or the injunction which was pending judgment on this particular exam, which was to be rewritten, would come off. This was what she found. So some 300 students from the Ghana School of Law were supposed to write um, a repeat paper for civil procedure today. However, they gathered here today not with the intention to write, but to boycott the process. However, at 10 o'clock, which is the start time for the paper, more than half of the students who were gathered here in intention to boycott the paper went in to write the exam. The exam went on as planned amid heavy security presence. In addition to the campus security, Police officials and armed personnel from the counter-terrorism unit were stationed at the end block where the exam was ongoing. Three hours later, the paper was over. Some of them shared their reasons for going ahead with the exam, despite the injunction and a plan by the repeat students to collectively boycott it. This uh, communique came very late. When we have decided to come and write, it was about two days ago, uh, let's say on Saturday, that uh, they created a platform, and on the platform, they asked us not to go and write the, the, the exams. But then we had already circuit our minds that we are going to write, have prepared. So why two days you come in? And uh, we heard that some of them have actually deferred here. Their, uh, the course to next year. So if you have secretly deferred, and I have not, you come and tell me that I should not go and write. You are not being fair to me. And some of our colleagues decided to boycott because uh, they were part of a group that uh, went for remarking. And then the court, they went to court for interpretation on some issues, and it looks like on Friday they placed an injunction. So they are covered. I, I am not part of those who went to the court. So, uh, in principle, I wasn't covered. So, I had to come and write. Yeah. But the plan was to collectively not write the paper. Yes, I think collectively that was what was going around by the uh, authorities. But then uh, it was uh, indicative that uh, those of us who was covering from the letter, the tenor of the letter was that it was only those who had gone for the remarking 
and whose results were published on the 7th of June were allowed, who were not were supposed to be uh, on, on the case in court. So they are covered. The few who stuck with the plan had one reason. The court's injunction on exams renders today's examination an illegality. I am very, very scandalized what is happening now in Ghana on legal education. It is only uncivilized nation that will treat its fellow citizens like this. Some people want to study law to help advance social progress. And look at how we have been handled. You have seen police presence here as if we are at war. I mean, examination is not execution. Nobody is here to fight. We are just determined to let the law work on the basis that there's a pending suit at the High Court Human Rights Division. So I don't see why they should, uh, people should amass police presence just to come and intimidate us. In any case, why? I registered for exams. If I'm not ready to write exams, why should police come here just to come and show his face? Are we fighting? Some of our colleagues are in there primarily because the school has been inactive and has been silent even though they received notice of this action last week mm -hmm. thursday and even on friday when a motion ex party was being heard the registrar of the school was in court although they were not supposed to be there because the motion was not on notice so they are aware, they are aware of what is happening uh, I'm, I'm part but i've decided not to partake in it again Okay, but some of your colleagues have gone ahead to take the exam. How does that make you feel? Um, every human institution, you have people who will divert. On the way, when you are soldiering on, you have people who will fall. So it's not, it's not a surprise. Yeah, they can go ahead. But we must stand for the principles in which we support. The time given for writing the exam, which is 10 days, was too short. And we believe that it was unreasonable and unfair. The service of the motion on notice, injunction motion on notice itself serves as a as an injunction. So they are restrained from conducting the exam. Okay. So that means this is an illegality? Yes, it is an illegality. Okay. Perpetrated by Ghana School of Law and the General Legal Council. So what do you make of those who have gone ahead to write? Um, we are actually disappointed, but uh, we don't, it, uh, we also know that it's, it's out of fear. We've seen how students have been treated unfairly in different uh, previous times and the fact that students are also afraid of victimization. Many of the students are very much displeased with their colleagues who went ahead to partake in the exam. However, they were not able to tell me on camera for fear of victimization. We'll be following the court case and the ruling is expected to be tomorrow. We'll await the outcome. Reporting for City News from the University of Ghana, Legon Campus, my name is Marie France Fodger. So this uh, is situation was, is the latest in a series of interesting events. So tonight, what I'll try and do is give you some history to these challenges. In fact, one of my guests has written a very interesting article where he spells out the history of legal education and even the purpose for setting up the, the Ghana School of Law. So we'll try and run through that. But as I always do on topics like this, I want to show you a quick flavor of online stories. If when, you, when you do a, a quick Google search of law school or Ghana School of Law, there, will be, there are so many stories that will come up. And it tells you how topical this issue has become. And incidentally, I read on Channel Television earlier today that they have their own problems with legal education because half of the students in Nigeria had failed the, the bar exam. So half of them passed, half of them failed. 50.2% passed and about 49% failed. But at least that's still better than Ghana. <laughs> if you go to Ghana, there are all kinds of stories. Halt Ghana Law School Entrance Exam Group to Government. This is just last week. Reduce Ghana Law School uh, marking fee parliament to Ghana General Legal Council. No conspiracies in law school exam reforms. Nana Kufuado. Collapse Ghana Law School Established Council for Legal Education. Lecturer. Nanado petitioned against, again over law school admissions. That was the second time it was petitioned. Supplementary law school entrance exams are unconstitutional, according to students. GBA wants probing to allege law school exam leakage. That was July last year. Students to petition Chief Justice over law school exam leaks, also July last year. Supreme Court throws out injunction against law school entrance exams, July last year. And Professor Asari's law school exam entrance application surface setback. In fact, that's one of many pages. So if there are lots of stories, about 40 stories on this. So just to let you know, this is an important topic. So who are my guests? I have um, sat opposite me in, on our new set, Kobe Amwa. He's the immediate 
past president of the Ghana School of Law Students Association. Yes. Great to have you, Kobe. Student representative council. SRC. Yes. Great. Good to have you. Sat next to him is Professor Kweku Asari. We like to call him Kweku Azar. <laughs> Kweku Azar, good to see you again. Thank you so much. I had you, see you again. I had you last July, and you are back here. Annual visit. Aluta continua. Annual visit. <laughs> <laughs> I like your hat too. <laughs> Thank you very much. And my old friend Ken Crunchy is a journalist. He's a farmer. He's a law student. <laughs> he's also going to be an author soon. How many things are you doing now? Uh, well, I'm I'm doing quite a lot. I'm also <laughs> establishing the first. <clears throat> The first educational institution dedicated to wealth creation in Ghana. I'm, I'm doing quite a lot of things. Hi, Ken Grandi. Yes, it's please. good to see you. So, Ken <coughs> is representing the Coalition for the Reformation of Legal Education. Yes, please. So, they also sent an issue to court. But I want to start with uh, Kobe. So, this case that Marie France reported on, it was to have been uh, ruled on tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Is that correct? Yeah, the motion, the motion will be moved tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. So we don't even know when the, the, the determination will be done. Yeah, mostly with the judge and applications and especially of this nature. I'm sure we, we, by tomorrow the judge will make a determination. So for those who don't know, why did, what, what are you seeking? What are, what are you seeking this motion, uh, injunction for? Okay. Uh, because the issue is in court, I don't like to comment much about Just explain it to us. Don't, yes, don't give yeah. us the answer yes. or what you think. Just tell us what you sent to court. <laughs> yes, so... The, the motion is to injunct the examination process. So injunct the whole examination process due to the time that students were given to prepare. Results were released in February, on the February 19th. And you see, the, per the calendar, when results are released and students are supposed to repeat, if you are repeating an academic year, it means you start right from the beginning. But due to certain difficulties that the school and the independent examination council had. The results which were supposed to be released before the academic year starts so that students, new uh, and repeat students, will be able to join the new students, start the whole academic year afresh, was released on the 19th of February. Then the opportunity for remarking was given for a period of 21 days. So after the 21 days, and per the student handbook, it's expected that every student, after you petition, within five weeks of your petition, you will be able to get results of your petition. So those who petition on the 20th of February, we're expecting their results latest by the 28th of March, thereabouts. And so that, that, that's, 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 that is how it was. But unfortunately, council or the independent examination council was not able to release the results early. The results came out on the 7th of June, this month. Wow. Then on the 7th of June, the same 7th of June, the school came out to a communicate that students, should, students who were awaiting their remarking results should register on the Monday, that's on the, should register within Monday the 10th, Tuesday the 11th, and Wednesday the 12th. To reset papers, to reset papers. which would not be successful with the remark. Yes. But how would they know whether they had been successful or not? Exactly, unless the results were released. And okay. the exam was to start today, that's the 17th. Okay. So that means the students just had a 10 week, 10, 10 day, day window, window to, prepare. to prepare. And we thought that, 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 that will be, that will, uh, is going to put a lot of hardship on the students. These, mind you, these students start in class for one year and they're not able to pass these courses. And especially repeating students who has, who has confirmed his status as a repeat student on the 7th, being asked to write an exam on the 17th. So per the process, difficult. if you wanted a remark and you wanted an appeal and all that, you would only know your status on the 7th of June. Exactly. So you had 10 days to prepare. 10 days to register and prepare. So were you yeah. asking for, do you, did, you, did you ask for a specific extension? Yeah, we are looking for about two months because the results itself was released about two months. Now when students are going for remarking, they make certain calculations. Now, you know that when you are going for remarking and your results are supposed to be released within five weeks, even if it comes and doesn't go well, psychologically and uh, physically, you'll be, able to, you'll be able to tune yourself, adjust to the system, then study and prepare for the exam. So, yes, yeah, some, some students will be looking at their period for remarking, you know, okay, the two months will be okay for me to do that. And other students also think that even with the whole remarking trauma, I'm not going for it. Let me just prepare and write my exam. But after everything... As I said, the results were released on the 7th, and students were expected to write the first possible procedure today. I see. So, 
what type of exam is it? For those who don't know, what is, is it like objectives? Is it written papers? Because there are different subjects, right? Yeah. So what, what, how long is the typical paper? The papers usually last for three hours. Three hours? Yes. They are, we don't write, we don't do objectives. So, so mostly written. they are all written, and maybe the draft parts and calculations for legal accountancy. Mm. So how many students were affected by the reset? Uh, initially, the numbers we had, there were 414. Mm -hmm. That's when the results were released on 19. There were 414 repeat students. But due to the nature of the, to how the, the current results were released after the remarking, they released course by course on a course by course basis. So it's difficult for us to ascertain the number of students who still fail. But by our own calculations, we still believe that there are about 300 repeat students who had to prepare within 10 days and take the exam, which even led to a number of them differing because I have a list of the number of students who registered within the three days, pay the 4,000 CDs and register within the three days to write the exam. 4,000 CDs? Yes. Was the cost of reset? Is the cost for of the repeats? Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's the cost for the repeats. Yeah, so they have to pay the four thousand in their three days to reset, and now they have one hundred and eighty-seven. So clearly, it's like about even one twenty people either have deferred, abandoned the course, or don't wow. even know what to do. I mean, we don't even have the funds to do. And even the hundred and eighty-seven, some were forced to register because we're just giving ten days. But as a student's body, when we look at the whole situation, we realize that. Something should have something should be done about this, mm. and that's why we are in court. Just give us some numbers. How many students failed to pass? Because I know there's people who passed, those who sort of completely failed, and then those who had some papers that they had to rewrite for the latest group. Because it was reported in the media that over eighty percent failed. Was that report correct? Yes, that's of when the results were released at first. Initially. 90% failed. 90%? 90 point something. How many people wrote the exam? There were about 740 something. I don't have the actual number. But after 90%. 740 something, wow. you know, there were two streams. The first stream were, the first stream were comprised of those who were repeated the previous year, mm. who were about 287. And those 287 students, together with the with our, our year group, we, we all wrote the exam. Mm. So with, with our year group, only 64 passed. Out of 287? No, out of about 500 and something. Wow. Only 64 passed. And with the our year group, that's 287, only eight of them passed. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. 64 so, out of over 500, eight out of 287. Yes. So putting that together, that's like 74 I have the actual statistics here. I can, Out of... I can yeah, I, I really need it. Because I, I'm trying to give people a certain basis for what is going on. And when this failure rate began... The, the, the repeat students, that's 8 over 287 times 100, that's the percent. That's 2.7 percent. So the 257, <laughs> only 2 percent passed. Only 2 percent passed. It's 287 or 257. Wow. Yeah. And then the 64 out of 500. That is about that's about 13 percent. So on average, about 10 percent. Yes. Okay. So this, these are the total statistics. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, that's this is in relation to the result that was released on the 19th of February. Mm -hmm. There are total of 727 students. Okay. 72 passed. Mm -hmm. 241 were referred, mm -hmm. and 414 were repeated. Wow. So 72 out of 727, that's 10%. 9.90%. Passed. Yes. How many papers were written in all? 10. 10 papers. Wow. After how many years of training in the Ghana School of Law? Some in the Ghana School of Law. Yes. One or two years. But all these people had done LLBs somewhere. Yes, yeah, LLBs, LLBs for yes. two, three, four years. Depending what on was the failure rate the year before? The year before, the pass rate was around 17%. 17%? Yes. So it worsened. Yes, it's worsened. What about the year before the year before? <laughs> the year before the year before... I'm just trying to get this to know whether the, the massive failure rate coincided with the way the place was administered or the exam was written. Do you get it? Because I know that in the past, the students who wrote the exam... Yeah, the, the whole thing started okay, with... So this is the statistics for the year before. Okay. Yes. So that's the 2017. Yes. In 2017, there were 521 candidates. Mm -hmm. 91 passed. Mm-hmm. 
were referred. Mm -hmm. Then 251 failed. Okay. Then the year before the year before, as you 2016. asked. 2016. <laughs> there were 298 candidates. Uh -huh. 230 representing 77.2% passed. Oh, okay. 47 were referred. Okay. And 21 failed. So something obviously happened between 2016 and 2017. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because 2016, you have 70 something pass, which is normal pass rate. 77% mm -hmm. pass. Yeah. And then the year after, 91 out of 521 pass. Yeah, that's 17.5%. In, in that period, they introduced the body called Independent Examination Committee or Board. Independent Examination Committee or Board. Committee or board. And then the failure rate increased astronomically. So there's a correlation between the change in exam governance yes. and the failure rate. Because to drop from 77 to 17% failure. So how, and, and, and the prof, I'll come to you. How does this IECB work? Well, because in the past, if 77% passed, I'm, I'm told that in the past, the same people who taught the courses were, were the marking. people who marked. Yes. But when an independent body was introduced to set questions and mark, Different from those who thought that's when the failure rate became astronomical. Yes. But it's not just that too. There was there was a total I won't say yes, let me say there was a total reform in the, in the legal education structure then. Now when the, the law reform committee came up with this, this report, the general legal council in its own wisdom decided to reduce the two year uh, two year academic intensive class to a one year academic intensive class. Okay. with six months of intention. Mm. Then they also introduced the Independent Examination Council. Okay. Then the repeat policy also changed. Mm. Initially, the repeat policy, I think you had to fill two or three out of the number of courses that you did in a year okay. to repeat. Now with the, with the new reform, students feel you have to fill three out of the ten courses that you study mm -hmm. to repeat. So these three factors together is what I believe brought about the, high, the increase in the failure rates. Because now with, with, with the current repeat policy, a student who fails, who gets three, seven A's, I probably made an analysis on his page some time ago, a student who gets seven A's and three, three C's will have to repeat the whole course again, rewrite all 10 papers. So definitely... So is the policy plus also the examination? Examin body. The conduct of the examination. All right, let me come to Ken. So, Ken, you are the, and thank you, Kobe, for this quick background. You are the, um, your group is called the Coalition for the Reformation of Legal Education. Yes, please. You also are in court? Yes, please. What are you, what, what, what is your problem? <laughs> well, I have instituted two cases against the General Legal Council in court. Okay. I would have included the Ghana School of Law, the Independent Examination Committee or Board. Mm hmm the reason why <clears throat> I do not include those two bodies is that basically they are under the control of the General Legal Council. So when you have the General Legal Council, it means that in this sense you have the IEB or IEC and then you also have the Ghana School of Law. Mm -hmm. Now I have two separate cases against the General Legal Council and I've cited the Attorney General because of statutory requirements. I realized after I had, Kobe is my, is my course mate, he's my school president. Now, I realized after I had been declared as a, as a, as a, a, fail, a fail student that <clears throat> I had to take this particular case to court. The reason why I took that decision was that <clears throat> I realized there was a need for there to be a body to conduct an examination of the conditions at the Ghana Law School. Remember, the General Legal Council itself <clears throat> has set up and a body to inquire into this matter. But that body is a subsidiary of the General Legal Council. It's headed by Justice Adinira also. And I'm of the belief that it is not going to be possible for us to have the, the truly independent inquiry that we need to have. Mm -hmm. So I decided to take this case to court. Now, after examining <coughs> the facts, I came to the conclusion that there were constitutional issues and then there were <coughs> human rights issues with regard to myself and both had to be tackled so i had to take a case to the supreme court and i had to take a case to the high court <coughs> at the high court i'm looking at uh, 15 reliefs 
and at the Supreme Court, I'm looking at 11 reliefs. The, <coughs> the sorry about it, mm -hmm. I think it's the cold water, I guess. Forgive me, mm -hmm. yes. I'm having problems with my voice. And now at the Supreme Court, I'm looking at a gamut of reliefs. For instance, the IEB, I'm challenging the constitutionality of the IEB because you see, the independent examining board, which was introduced about two years ago. I'm challenging the constitutionality, and I'm glad I'm, I'm here today with Professor Asari. Mm -hmm. Because he had already taken this case to court before, and the Supreme Court had said that that body was an illegality. Is it? Yes. But it still exists? After the Supreme Court had decided that that body was an illegality, then the General Legal Council and the Attorney General went back to Parliament and introduced what we have, what we call the LI-23... LI-2355, this is, this is it, LI-2355. Mm -hmm. That then reintroduced the independent examination board mm -hmm. now as a statutory body. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the law critically, we have what we call the Legal Profession Act, mm -hmm. Act 32. It is, a, it is an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. This LI is a, is a subsidiary legislation. Now, you cannot use a subsidiary legislation to amend a substantive act. Are you with me? I'm following you. Because Act 32 has the Board of Legal Education. Some functions of the Board of Legal Education has been taken away and given to the Independent Examination Board. I'm saying in the Supreme Court that what they have done essentially <coughs> is use a subsidiary legislation to amend an Act of Parliament, and that cannot be done. Parliament does not have the power under Article 107 of the 1902 Constitution to pass that type of law. So I'm challenging that. <coughs> I'm also <coughs> saying that certain conducts of the... General Legal Council are illegal. For instance, the entrance examination concept. I'm seeing that it amounts to torture under Article, Article 15 of the 1992 Constitution. It amounts to what? Torture. 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 Yes. <coughs> hey. And and and, 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 <laughs> and the, 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 the reason why I'm saying that it amounts to torture is very simple. All across the world, mm -hmm. the <coughs> basic qualification for progressing to the professional level of legal education is the LLB. Is the LLB. Mm. The introduction of the entrance examination is a particular wrinkle that has been introduced by the legal system in this country. It's unique to Ghana. It's unique to Ghana. I see. It's unique to Ghana. The, the concept of the entrance examination. And then again, anybody who has studied for the LLB mm -hmm. over a period of three years or four years will tell you, my brother, if you have studied a course like tort law, contract law, Ghana legal systems, okay, criminal law, mm. environmental law, all these laws that we study, they are major courses of study in themselves. Mm. Major courses of study. To, to, to be able to pass contract law, you have to learn hundreds of, hundreds of legal principles, hundreds of cases, hundreds of facts, be able to blend them together before you can pass the entrance... Uh, Pass the contract law examination. Mm. What the entrance examination that does is <clears throat> put together 10 major law courses and blend them into one particular examination. And I'm saying that given the volume of material, it's unreasonable. It's unreasonable. I see. So you have said two things. You, I be the, the examination body is <clears throat> illegal in setting it up. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying that writing the exam itself. And then, and then at the other point I'm making the Supreme Court is that insofar as the LLB is the basic qualification that is used to progress to the professional law course. That's also... What the entrance examination does is, is set up a bar that stops some people. I get it. From progressing to the professional. I'm saying that that amounts to discrimination. So I've set up about 15 of these about 11 of these constitutional cases that I have... And you sent to the Supreme Court? I've sent to the Supreme Court. And I'm asking the Supreme Court for a determination. Now, <coughs> this General Legal Council, I took this case on the 16th of, of May this year. They had 14 days to respond. As I talk to you today, what is the date today? S 17th June. 17th June. They have not bothered to come in and to respond file a response. What they have done is continue with the same actions that are in the Supreme Court. For instance, after, as I talked to you, they've advertised that by 12 July people should submit applications to undergo, undergo an, another entrance examination. I so, see. So, so, so even, though even though your case is supposed to be pending? Even though my case Great. is supposed to be. So, so, 
Mm-hmm. I'll take a break. Mm-hmm. When I come back, I'll let you wrap up and I'll bring Kukuaza in. Uh, Professor Kukuaza sent a 19-page commentary. Who was this addressed to? Uh, Parliament. Parliament, good. Where he takes issue with four clauses of an amendment that was proposed and he sort of exposed some of the loopholes in those clauses. We'll let him address those. We already have a lot of messages coming through on this subject. This is the point of view. Stay with us. Welcome back to the point of view. Tonight we're trying to understand where legal education is. Many people have taken issue with the current system. They feel the Ghana Law School, the entrance exams, the way the exams are marked and ways administered, not fair, unconstitutional. My guests are Kobi Amwa, who's a student leader. Uh, Ken Kranchi is a law student and journalist. And Professor Kweku Asari is a lecturer and also I call him a civil rights campaigner or a constitutional campaigner. Let me read some of your comments before we come to him with his comments. So quite a lot of you are getting in touch with us on this subject. Bernard, the Attorney General last year said General Legal Council has acquired a land for a law village. I want to know if anything like that truly exists. And please ask your guests what the lawyer to client ratio in Ghana is. Michael from Afanko wants to know. Well, earlier we spoke about nurse to patient ratio, so I'm sure that's what you want to know. Bernard, Ghana School of Law and General Legal Council are lawless, moribund institutions. Why are they doing this to Ghanaians? Students are treated unjustly and unfairly. <coughs> Paul Agbolosu from Aplau. Good evening, Bernard. The law students are not united. They feel joining others in protest will deprive them of becoming lawyers oh, due to the vindictive attitude of the General Legal Council. Lots of lawyers are willing to speak on their behalf, but they are not willing to support a divided front. Until we become united and fight against this illegality, we will continue to suffer. This is Opia Mensa. How can law students contradict themselves with the same law they are studying? Which of the student groups will be vindicated and which will be victimized? Immortal from Chifu Praso. I think this is in reaction to the report Marie France filed, where some people turn up to write the exam and others say they were not going to write. But the general, the Ghana School of Law must be scrapped. It's no longer needed. Let us adopt ICAG or ACCA model. It's the best model to cure the issues going on at the School of Law, Paul in a flower. Bernard, I was profoundly astonished when I heard mass failure of this on the part of law students. It's, is it because the students deliberately set, sorry, is it because the school deliberately set difficult questions with the intent to fail students or the students are just not serious? Father SK from Kumasi. Well, it's interesting to know that a large percentage of those who went for remarking passed. So maybe it's the marking. Is it not? What percentage of, the, of the, those who went for remarking passed? This year we don't have the, the statistics. It's, but for but this year it was, re- it was released on a course by course basis. Yeah. Okay. Last year, I think there's a belief that about 70% of the people went for remarking. 70% of the people for remarking. Yeah, pa- not, I don't have it. It's in Kweku Azaz, right? Kweku, okay, so let me come to you. You wrote a 19 page letter, Sermon on the Mount to who? Who did you write this thing to? Well, to the parliamentary subcommittee that oversights legal education. And uh, I believe that will be the constitutional committee. And the reason I wrote that was because there is a proposed amendment of the Legal Perfection Act. Okay. And uh, I was giving them some comments on what need to be taken into account. Mm -hmm. Now, Bernard, the legal problems that we are talking about Mm-hmm. They become like the Accra rain. <laughs> we know it's going to rain in June and mm-hmm. May, and we know when it rains, it's going to flood. Mm-hmm. But we wait and we don't do anything about it. And when it floods, we say a few things about it, and then we forget until next year. Mm-hmm. That's exactly where we are with this legal education system. Mm-hmm. The truth is, the current legal education architecture is outmoded and it has failed. It's being kept afloat by a bunch of entrenched stakeholders and regulators and all the complaints that you are hearing, uh, some of them that you've not heard include the cost. The cost Mm. is too high. The duration itself is too high. It may take you 10 years to qualify as a lawyer if you are fortunate. Mm. The failure rate is too high. 
they talk about the failure rate of 10 percent that's actually higher than the actual failure rate because when you want to talk about the failure rate you have to include all the students who have not been even given the opportunity to take mm. the exam mm. so you, every year we have about three thousand people and out of the three thousand people they use all kinds of screening mechanisms to select maybe 600 maybe 700 and out of that 700 we are talking about only 10 percent passing so if you if you think about the three thousand who start then every year 300 or less of the three thousand are coming out as lawyers if you took any process mm -hmm. making food uh, sewing clothes whatever and you were working on three thousand things mm -hmm. and at the end of it only 300 came out well you should be fired immediately because that means something is structurally and fundamentally wrong mm. look at today the exam that they were taking and look at the police presence this is mm. a law exam why do we have this significant police presence to intimidate mm. the students or what mm. look at the injunction that kobe talked about they were in court on friday and the judge assured them mm -hmm. including the lawyer and i saw a comment written by the lawyer to the effect that the ex party motion that they were bringing was superfluous because their motion on notice should operate automatically to bar the general legal counsel from giving the exam today nonetheless the general legal counsel went ahead and gave the exam so we have a lot of problems with the general legal counsel who is the general legal counsel the general legal counsel is the statutory body mm -hmm. that is set up to regulate the legal profession including administering of exams and so on and so forth so it's a body that was created in the 1960s under Kwame Nkrumah under Kwame Nkrumah and the composition of that body include the four most senior members of the Supreme Court wow the attorney general some representatives of the Ghana Bar Association and then the dean of the University of Ghana only Legon Legon and that is part of the problem because the body itself is outmoded because we are in 2019 but we are using a 1959 vehicle wow. on the highway and it's causing a lot of problems you see Bernard at the time that this general legal council was set up mm. the law school at the university of ghana was the only game in town mm. so logically there would be the only institution that would be put on the general legal council today we have about 11 law faculties so what is the case for including only one of them on the council you have four of the most senior supreme court members on this body they make regulations because it's an agency. So when you sue the General Legal Council, when you the sue Supreme the Court, General Legal sue Council, Supreme which Court. I did in 2015 and was successful, but I'll tell you about <laughs> it. When you go to the court, what you are basically telling the Supreme Court members who are sitting on the case is that, by the way, the General Legal Council, which is the highest body that regulates the legal profession and are supposed to be the masters of the law, they have misunderstood or misapplied the law. Mm. and four of your members are on it your most senior members your senior members including the chief justice so you are calling on the supreme court to say the general legal council which is headed by the chief justice have erred as a matter of law and bernard as a plaintiff that is a very intimidating so how did you win because you won a case there i won because the law was on my side how many people were constituted for the supreme court that day i i believe it was uh five or seven I, I can't remember was it unanimous it was unanimous <laughs> unanimous wow but wait you see uh with that even with that judgment they approbated and reprobated it, it, I, it, they, they, they have a, a term in key called mutro mojo mutro mojo means you blow hot and you blow cold and you blow cold that is what they were doing because they said that what the general legal council had done mm. and what they had done was the administration of the entrance examination and the interviews 
And I went to the court and said those screening mechanisms were unconstitutional. If you look at the law and if you look at the legislative history of the law. So they agreed with me that the General Legal Council acted unconstitutionally. Nonetheless, the court applied a doctrine called prospective overruling doctrine. They misapplied it, by the way, and in the article, uh, the commentary that I sent to Parliament, I have a, an article uh, that uh, is coming out in the Journal of African Law, mm -hmm. and I explain why they misapplied the doctrine. They misapplied the doctrine very badly, but they issued something that uh, technical, I don't want to get too technical, but it's called consequential orders. And the consequential order said to the student, even though the exam is unconstitutional, go and take it anyway. That's basically what we found ourselves, the situation that we found ourselves in 2017. On June 17, the court said the examination is unconstitutional. There was a, a forthcoming exam, I think, in July. But the court ordered the students to go and undergo this unconstitutional and incidentally, exercise. it's a year ago today. It's a year ago today, yes. So even the court, you see, when they are saying the General Legal Council, yeah, is, yes. uh, General Legal Council is wrong and have acted unconstitutionally, they find some ways. But if the General Legal Council is outmoded, based on your view, it's not fit for purpose, it's not up to what we require today in this constitution and composition, who are you going to appeal to? Because, as you said, the Supreme Court is the top four judges there are on the council. The chief justice is there. The attorney general is part. The director of the Ghana School of Law will be part. And, of course, the, the, the dean of the Legon Law School yeah, is not part. So, yes. in attendance. It's right? in attendance. Not part. Yes, so my, my question is that who will bail the cat? Well, that's why I've written this thing to parliament. Because, ultimately, parliament exercises oversight over the General Legal Council. The General Legal Council is a statutory uh, agency. So it is accountable to Parliament. And Parliament can make a law which says you can't do this and you can't do that. So uh, with this uh, amendment, they were doing four things. Number one, they were introducing a quota system. And the quota system will operate, said that they will tell the University of Ghana, you can only bring 20 students to the School of Law uh, University of Cape Coast, you can only bring 10 students and so on. This is clause two. This is clause two. Clause one relates to lawyers who are qualified in other jurisdictions. Like I am a lawyer in the United States. If I wanted to move to Ghana and practice as a lawyer here in Ghana, I have to be admitted to the Ghana bar. And they are saying, if I come, I have to, number one, go to school for one year. They call it post-call. Then after the post-call, I have to go and do this exam that we are talking about. And then and if six very, months. And if I'm it. very lucky and I'm passed, no, 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 I have to do one year privilege. They extended it from there's, six, six there's, months to one year. The, the, the bill, the proposed amendment, will extend it from six months to one year. So two years where I'm going to school and I'm doing privilege. The third one. Based on how old you are and how many years you are at the bar. How many years you've had at the bar and whether or not. So if you are called back to the New York bar, and you are practicing at the highest level, you want to come and do a case in Ghana for which, or you want to resettle in Ghana, you have to still do pupillage. Yes. Not just pupillage, but you have to do post call, take one year of classes at Mokola. The third thing wow. is they are trying to reintroduce the interviews which Parliament threw away, and of course the entrance examination. And the fourth is this uh, independent examination uh, committee. Now, my solution is very, very simple. Look, the legal profession is not the only profession in Ghana. We have the accountancy profession. I'm happy to be an accountant too. We have the medical profession. And the accountancy and medical profession and other professions operate without anyone ever complaining. So the question is, what is so special about law that we are always complaining? Because lawyers like to talk. No, it's not because lawyers... <laughs> you have, you, you no, move your book long. No, it's not because lawyers like to talk, you see. Because if you look at the school of medicine, the uh, mm -hmm. medical school, originally it was set up like the law school. Mm. University of Ghana was the only school that was preparing students to go to Kolibu. Yes. But over time, 
as more universities participated, they figured out a way to get the regulator out of the schooling. Okay. And the regulator only administers the medical uh, exam. Mm. And that's what the law profession needs to do. They need to close down the school of law. They need to outsource education to people who are trained to educate. Mm -hmm. That is university professors. Mm. Take all your legal education at the universities because that's what the universities do. The universities have a comparative advantage over the Ghana School of Law in training people to think like lawyers. So you think that the Ghana School of Law shouldn't even be teaching doing a one-year program? There should be no Ghana School of Law. You say you go to the University of Ghana or University of Cape Coast or Wisconsin or Gimpa or wherever and you do your LLB. The courses that you take, the regulator will indicate what courses you should take. And then when you are done, we would examine you to figure out whether you are competent in the law. Mm. So you will be given exams in constitutional law, contract, and so on and so forth. Here, when they go to Ghana School of Law, they are not tested in constitutional law and thoughts and contract. They are tested in courses. Uh, one of them is management. One of the exam questions that I saw that really freaked me <laughs> out. They asked students who are attempting to become lawyers to discuss the three principles of scientific management theory. That is a question that if you ask at the College of Business, because I did business, we will laugh at you. That is a, that is a silly question. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove that you understand anything. It just proves that you've memorized a few things that you can put on paper. That's not how we should be training lawyers in the 21st century. But that's what would happen when you outsource the training of lawyers to people who are not mm. professional educators. Because they don't have the training and so on. So, so even creating the IECB, IEC is not really a solution. No, no, everything that they are doing today, next year, I'll be here, we'll be back talking about it. Because we are not solving the problem. The problem is that we have regulators who have failed to respond to a changed marketplace. And they are holding on to old ideas that are no longer workable in the 21st okay. century. I'll take, I'll take a short break. When I come back, I'll find out what else we've tried. Because I know... The president has spoken about this in, in, in respect of the exam failures. I know the attorney general has also been contacted. So we'll try and find out what else the students have tried and what successes or otherwise have been talking. I have a lot of your messages as well. This is the point of view. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. Tonight, we're trying to understand the issues relating to legal education. My guests are Kobe Amwa, who is a former student leader, Ken Kranche, who is a, a law student and journalist, and Professor Kukwasari, who is, um, yes, he's just Kukwasari, Kukwasari is now on Facebook, <laughs> an advocate. Imano Niankra says, it is only in Ghana that more than half of students that start for an exam fail, and the people who administer still keep their job. The lecturers deserve to be fired. Paul Agbolosu says, The Ghana School of Law must be scrapped. It is no longer needed. Let's adopt ICAG or ACCA model. It's the best to cure the nonsense going on at law school. Say I'm Luther says, Well done, Kobe and Uncle Ken. We are proud of you. More comments. Ben, there is a system which is not fair, coupled with administrative incompetence at law school. When these students apply for remarking at a cost of 3,000 CDs per paper, about 80% or more pass. In my case, I applied for remarking in two papers, conveyancing and family law. When the remark results were released, I passed conveyancing and the paper had already passed advocacy, which I did not apply for. <laughs> you see the ineptitude. Um, Frederick Kelly Kofi says, Professor Asari, I am with you. Keep it up. Let me come back to Kobe. You've, uh, Prof talked about parliament. He's written comments to the parliamentary committee. Who else have you try to speak to, because the president is a senior lawyer, if very respected. Is initial when he came, we went to parliament, even we met the parliamentary committee, yeah. where we were there with the lecturers mm -hmm. and the general legal council. Okay. Then we raised a number of issues, all the problems that we were facing. 
and it will interest you to know that the lectures on CAD, everything you said, is captured here on page seven of the report of mm -hmm. the, par the parliamentary committee. Then from there, on the 3rd of April, <coughs> the whole parliament, uh, the plenary, discussed the report. And even other, especially the Honorable Aaron who made some very brilliant submissions in addition. Then they adopted the, they adopted the report. And I know that the report was, the whole, the hands was transcribed and the copy was sent to the General Legal Council as recommendations. The speaker directed that uh, copies to the General Legal Council, mm -hmm. Director of Legal Education, Independent Examination Committee, Attorney General. Some of the recommendations that he made were the, were that the remarking should be reduced from 3,000 to 500. Mm -hmm. They should reopen the remarking period so that students who were not able to afford to do marking schemes. So this is Parliament to the General Legal Council. Yes. Did the Legal Council listen to what Parliament said? <laughs> At all. They didn't even implement the one. Only, the, only, the only change that we saw. Wow. But there was one change that we saw, and that's we have to give credit to the General Legal Council. In some of the courses that we complained that the questions were out of the manual. General Legal Council told us that we were going to conduct an investigation. In as much as we didn't get any reports from the investigation, we don't know what transpired in the investigation. When the results were released, we were told that some, with, in some courses there was general remarking mm. and the students who passed those courses. So, so Parliament gave mind. you hearing. Recommendations were sent to GLC. Only one major one was adopted. As but we didn't get any feedback, but that is what we, we, we saw we by... We what about the president? Him. Did you meet the president? Yeah, so we met the president. We met him on the 6th of May. What did he say? When we met the president, in his, in his view, things that the general legal council, in as much as we raised, mm -hmm. he thinks that a number of the issues that we raised were legitimate and valid. He thinks that the general legal council is capable of handling it. Is it? So he wrote, he wrote to the general legal council, which... Where there was a confirmation of that from his secretary to us <coughs> that he wrote to the general legal council indicating our issues and asking them to resolve it in the nearest i think there was i think there was even supposed to be a timeline did you that, listen to you what about the attorney general the attorney general was in the meeting with the president and the behind the scenes too we've had a number of a number of uh, engagements with her mm. and she I, I must say has been very entertaining and responsive listens to, our, to you she listens to us she, she responds to our engagements but. ken mm -hmm. I, I want a final comment from you before i come to prof so you your case when is it going to be heard uh, well so far it has not been set yet for in that case the, the respondents have not come into the human rights case or the case Supreme Court the, case. yes People are advising that they are going for judgment or whatever, but it's, it's very interesting. You see, you remember judgment debt. Do you remember, do you remember judgment debt? When public officials are giving positions to re defend public positions. They have to come out. You have to come out. Mm. You have to come out. You have a responsibility. That is why you are paid that fat salary and that fat allowance. Mm. When somebody takes the government to court, on a legal case, a constitutional case, the attorney general has a fiduciary responsibility to come and make a case. You can come and agree or you can come and disagree, but you must step forward. So you are waiting for them to do that. They, they must you don't want forward. to go and get a, a judgment they, 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 on one they, which they, is one sided. They, yes, they they must step they have forward. To. They must step forward. I, and I, and you see, my I brother just a minute. Uh, my brother Kobe talks about the attorney general being very entertaining. I agree. What you must look at are, are the actual actions that the Attorney General... So she's accommodating, she'll listen to she you. She listens to you. But the Attorney General has sent a, an amendment of the Act 32 to, 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 to Parliament. And you should look at some of the conditions that are stated therein. The quota system, which is completely... Which is what he's talking yes, about. Yes, yes. I've, written, I've, I've also written a memo in the same direction to Parliament. Some of the requirements that they've put in, mm. that people have... So put, you don't think her actions support her posture? Yes, yes. Because okay. I have a minute. What, what do you think? What, what should we do? Just a, 30 seconds. Uh, the distinction between professional legal education and academic legal education is not valid mm -hmm. and the distinction is the reason why we have the Ghana School of Law and the uh, law faculties. Once you admit that that distinction is frivolous, then you are going to get solutions because you shut down the School of Laws, you have the faculties train all the law students and okay. everyone is given an opportunity to write a bar examination. Thank you very much. My guest, Kobi Amwa, a former student leader, can.
Crunchy, law, law student and journalist, and Professor Kwekwasari, who's a lecturer and also, I want to call him a human rights advocate or a constitutional advocate. My name is Bernard Avlet. Thank you for watching CCTV. Stay with us. Goodbye. <laughs>